So this is how to play one of my favorite camp games ever, Command and Conquer. So if this is your site, um, very sparse camp apparently, um, the way it works is you divide your camp up into a bunch of zones. The goal of the game is for the kids to capture as many zones or occupy the most time in the zones um, at, cumulatively at the end of the game. So this is your camp. You have a bunch of zones designated. You probably want more than five, but it's just easier for visual visualization. So say you're doing this for maybe Color War or uh, just a, a large group game. You can split the kids up into either two or three major teams. For the purpose of this game, I'll, we'll use three. We'll use the blue team, the green team, and the pink team. So um, you're going to make sub-teams first. And usually groups of three, four, or five work well. So let's just say we have um, a blue team. So we're going to make three sub-teams of five here. Okay. I'll have a pink team. So it's the second subgroup. And then we have the green team. And then what I do just to keep track of it is that I call them, you know, blue one, so B1, B2. B3, and etc, etc, etc. So, the way that the game works is that when the time starts, the groups need to stick together at all times. So B1 is always going to have to be with B1, and that plays into the mechanics of the game. The way that it works is that in each of these zones, you have an adult or an older person that's going to be the timekeeper. It doesn't have to be an adult person, but you want to make sure they're doing it properly. So, in there, they'll have a stopwatch or a phone or something like that that will keep time for the groups. So, when the game starts, let's say B1 is going to want to occupy, capture this territory here. As soon as, if there's nobody in this territory, that's really important. If there's no one in here first, um, except for that adult, if there's no other team in there, when all five of them get into that base, you can use um, like a raccoon circle or line paint or some way to designate the specific area. They need to be in there. And um, when they reach that spot, the timer starts. So the person will start their stopwatch and the time will keep increasing, okay? Now the blue team, B1 here, has a choice. They can stay and defend this base or they can leave and try to capture another base. As long as no one else approaches this base and enters it with their entire team, that clock is gonna keep running. So maybe you make a hidden base that's really, really hard to find. If they were to find it, then no one else challenges it. They can leave, they can go wherever they want, and that time's gonna go as long as the person is there. If the blue team leaves, say they left and they went to this zone over here, and P1, the pink team, wanders into this base and blue isn't there, then the timer will stop for the blue team and then will start for the pink team. So blue might have gotten, you know, three minutes and five seconds. So I usually give the people the same color so they can just write in the same color, and that's the blue time starting. And then pinks will start from that point and they can make the same choice. They can leave, they can go to another base, um, or they can stay there and defend it. What defending looks like is, so for instance, say we'll take G3. They decide to go to the cabin base over here and they wanna stay. They really wanna defend that base. What would happen is if another team wanted to take it over, and remember that groups are traveling as a whole team. So say P3 wants to come and capture this base here, but green is already in there. If all the team members are present, as soon as that happens, so we'll say all 10 kids in this instance are in this base, then uh, one representative from G3 and one representative from P3 would have um, rock, paper, scissors. You could do any camp game like finger fencing or add them up or any of those classic quick camp games. I use rock, paper, scissors because it's really easy and you don't have to explain this part of the game overall. So rock, paper, scissors happens. If, so green was here first, if green wins, rock, paper, scissors, best two to three or whatever, their time keeps going. If P3 wins, the time stops for G3 and starts for P3 for the pink team, and green has to go and at least make an attempt to capture another base. So green, if they lost, right, their timer would stop with say a minute and one, and the pink time would then start, and green would have to go to another base and at least make an attempt at doing that. Now there's no way to actually 
you know, I, you could put in a system, but I found the honor system works pretty well. If green wanted to come back for this base to keep building their time there, they can, but only after they've gone to this middle base. And again, rock, paper, scissors, kids have to be all together, and that's the key to this. Okay, so then at the end of the game, the way that it wraps up is that each base keeper, each time keeper is going to come and report back to whoever's in charge and say, depending on how you want the game to be determined, it could be that uh, the, you could take all the cumulative time and add it up together and that could be a way that you win. Or at the end of the game, who have possession of the base and therefore time wouldn't necessarily matter. Um, you could do it a bunch of different ways. But uh, you can incorporate this with a ton of different themes, whether it's um, like medieval style, territory taking, or Star Wars. There's tons of different ways this game can be applicable. But that's Command & Conquer. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email at matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at gocamp.pro.